And I looked over, I'll never forget, and I smiled and she smiled. No, I, I was, oh, I'm such a coward. No one's gonna watch you in the beginning. No one knows who you are in the beginning. <laughs> so and even like Elon Musk talking about Twitter. Wait a minute now, this is a free speech kind of zone. Look at me, high five. This is Anything and Everything, a space for creators, talent, and entertainers such as comedians, actors, models, musicians, and creatives who bring production to life. A place to be seen, to be heard, to share their stories and advice with the world, and a place to be celebrated. Care more than others think is wise. Expect more than others think is possible. Trust me, you are not going to want to miss this. Be sure to tune in to the YouTube channel every Friday. See you guys then. I find it very important that as part of my job, I spend hours doing this, is engaging with people and responding to comments or even just reaching out and commenting on people's things. So that way, if my comment's there and people are going through the comments, they will click on the page, want to see about it, and then they might like. So right. any possible way to grow or to put, plant a seed somewhere, since a lot of our job is the audience, the viewers, the people coming in and watching, those are the ones we want to return and we want to make happy and we have to keep engaging in because that's what's either numbers sometimes are very important as far as money monetarily. I don't know as far as ticket sales, if that's very important for commission or even on online, like every thousand, like advertisers pay a certain amount and the more thousands you get the more the money's coming in what's funny is is that with comedy social media right yeah so let's say you have ten thousand followers that's not going to translate to a lot of people coming to your show unless all ten thousand people live in a geographical location that you know it's like wow i have ten thousand followers in georgia yeah so then you could just go to georgia and then right but that's yeah. not how it works but when it first started out bookers who were like boomers the bookers didn't know the difference so you could have like a thousand followers and they would think, wow, a thousand people are going to come to the show. Oh, yeah. And so there was comics in the beginning yeah. who were like, I have 1500 followers. And they're like, that's amazing. Yeah. Headline this weekend. And then yeah. nobody came. All of a sudden, that means that they started getting wary of those types of, of, of social media people. Right. So then you get so then they looked at and they said, hey, we had a guy here with a couple thousand. Nobody showed up. So we don't care anymore. But then once people started breaking those 300,000, 400,000, it, it's amazing because Jim Gaffigan said, I don't need all 8 billion people to love me. Mm -hmm. I just need 1 million. So if you can get a certain percentage of people, mm -hmm. like three, 400,000 people on the right platform with the proper brand, because mm -hmm. here's the other thing. I know a lot of comedians who have a million followers on TikTok, but what they do is like their content doesn't translate to their stand up. So they're like uh, dipping chips in, is it guacamole or is it something else? Uh -huh. And so they're getting all these views, but then nobody wants to go see that as stand up. I know I got a buddy who has a bunch of viral sketches, but it doesn't translate to his stand up. So his, his sketches are doing great, but nobody wants to go watch him do stand up. And I know the people who take the sketches that do really well, if they translate it to their stand up and they take those characters and they bring those characters to stage, then they start to do well. You know, and actually I would I would say that's probably the same thing with certain types of meet and greets for like for models or mm -hmm. bodybuilders or certain people that are like known for their looks. Yeah. Imagine if like you're on the internet and you're known for having this great body and then you do a meet and greet and you're wearing six sweaters yeah. and and right and you're wearing like you look you don't do your hair people would be really disappointed Brilliant, yeah right they want to see you the way that they've fallen in love with you like a mm -hmm. professional wrestler you know they got to show up and look like the professional wrestler mm -hmm. you know imagine if the rock just showed up in like a suit and tie mm -hmm. he'll be like no i want to see the rock i want to see a guy in speedos yeah with a tank top walking around right, right. and the same thing kind of goes with comedian if a comedian's content doesn't match their stand-up or vice versa then they're going to have a problem so you got to have the content yeah. that matches the brand of the stand-up. That's how you get people to come back again and again and again. Yeah, there's something that they're attached to. It's like a, yes. a flavor in a way, right? right? Or like a scent. I feel like with content creating, it's like you could have a thousand subscribers or you could have one million. You have one million from all over, from everything else, but then you have the 1,000 loyal that are like watching everything. And it's crazy because you'll see like with Instagram and most platforms, you'll see one creator who has this many subscribers and then this person's getting views though, but this person's views are very low. If they have a thousand active local people who are engaging, that's what we want over a thousand not engaging, not involved. I'd rather have 20,000 followers in which I'm getting 80% watch yeah. than a million followers where only a thousand. Right. Because, well, you know what happened with me was I had a student when I was a high school teacher. She's very famous in Brazil. And she followed my page when she graduated high school. And I was like, great. Okay, fine. You know, you're an 18 year old adult. You can do whatever you want. I followed her back. And then she reposted one of my Instagram stories. I woke up the next morning with 4,000 new followers mm. because she had like a 90,000 followers. Yeah. But then what happened was over time, 
I just saw this decrease in my followers mm -hmm. because I think people just woke up and they're like, Is what? It? Yeah. Why was I following this guy? Yeah. Because I got a bump from someone who had 100,000 followers. So yes, I at one point I had like, I don't know, it was like 14,000 followers and it's reduced itself, but they all left, mm -hmm. but they all followed me. But I, they didn't speak English. They're all from Brazil. Yeah. Like I saw the actual like analytics where it mm -hmm. said people from Brazil, your number one audience. But I'm doing everything in English about being like a single so white dude. Eventually they're like, why am I following yeah. this? Yeah. They don't remember why. Yeah, they remember you following. But the student told them to follow me, right? So right. so so how you sustain that is also just as important, right? right? Like I don't want to wake up ever again. It's depressing. Yeah. Can I have to say that? Like it almost feels like, especially when when your job and your money relies on numbers and your audience. So when you feel like you have regressed from the growth, yes. it feels like, what am I doing wrong and how can I compensate to fix that? I don't know if you remember or not, but remember when Instagram had it so that you could only do the swipe up with the link if you had oh, 10,000 yeah. followers or more? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Okay. Yeah. I got 12,000 because of the Brazilians. And then when they left, I lost the privilege at 9,990. And I'll never forget, I had a big show that week and, and, I, was, to and I wanted to swipe up and I lost the right. And so, can I say this? Because it's, mm -hmm. it's awful. Okay. I created a burner account to okay. follow me yeah oh to go back what? to ten thousand. Hey, we've all done it okay yeah. so now what i've done is is i did that and then i put the link up and then it stayed but then it all went down eventually yeah the platforms still don't know what to do with the bots they mm -hmm. still don't know what to do and even like elon musk talking about twitter mm -hmm. going like i'm gonna make everyone pay this way you'll have yeah. no but you know what People will still pay $5 for their bot because they get to be a jerk or they get to like run their own test. I do think that that's not going to stop anything in the long run, but mm -hmm. that is a problem. When you go, oh crap, I have 40,000 followers, I have 10,000 followers, whatever, and you're getting the views of someone who has like 700 followers mm -hmm. because it's not real, right? You get a, a fake push or something. Have you ever had anyone buy you followers before? Me? Yeah. No. No, like as a cruel prank? Uh, no. But, oh, somebody did that to get you excited? Not me. Uh, I had a friend. friend who did it. She woke up and she's like, someone bought me. You can just tell us bought followers. Yeah. The names and stuff like that. Oh, no yeah. No followers, you know. And she was so mad because yeah. they do look at that yeah. when the analytics and the algorithm is pushing. Oh, yeah. Audience interaction is a very, very important thing, too, because you could have 10,000 followers yeah. and then none of them were actually interacting with your content. That's what I was referring to. But I have purchased, like, the sponsored post where you can pay a certain amount to yeah. get your content to, like, um, reach more people um, but I never get good return on that like usually the ad will stop running within like a 24 hour or if I do it for a week and then it'll charge me and then it'll I'll get like less views than if I would just let it go randomly I ran an ad on an alternative account to see if I could get a post to go viral pay like $6.99 for the ad and then it was supposed to reach about six dollars six dollars six dollars six dollars okay and it was supposed to reach about a thousand people so six ninety nine for a thousand people obviously you're paying for the ad so that it pushes it out in front of people to get those views Right. right. I was like, well, I kind of want to get this content out in front of people. So I'm just going to push this ad. So it kind of, in a way, it's kind of like you're paying the algorithm to push your content out, which is like, why isn't my content getting pushed out already anyways? But you can still pay for that, you know? Well, that's another thing too, is that they're making you pay to play. Pay to get in front of people. Yeah. And a lot of this started because uh, Instagram, Facebook, you know, Meta, they don't let you use outside links mm -hmm. the same way. They don't, they don't push it. Mm -hmm. So if you're using on Facebook, you do a Facebook ad. Yeah. You, if you have a link for your own website to, to sell merch, mm -hmm. you have to pay for people to be able to see that. Mm -hmm. If you just post it, Meta won't touch it. Like they won't, prom it won't, they won't promote it. it. And and you then have to hope that people show up to your right. page. See it. And, and the active followers, right? And that to me is kind of like, wait a minute now. This is a free speech kind of zone, but mm -hmm. they're actually limiting. They see the, the link. So here's what I did. I run a comedy show every Saturday. And in Santa Clarita, started running $25 ads. And we saw an uptick in about 25 people coming. After yeah, we did that. So growth, some growth in sales. Oh, totally. And then the next week, we didn't run more. Mm -hmm. And only six people showed up for the show. Oh, so you do see it does help. Oh, it's huge. That $20, $25 that I spend weekly is the difference between me making four or $500 yeah. or me making nothing. Right. Yeah, sometimes that, that tiny investment is all you all yeah. need. I, that's why I was like, maybe I'll, I'll put in a couple bucks here and there. To promote the content and if it's good content then hopefully it'll take off right that's the goal is for it to take off and i think a lot of tiktokers have paid for those tiny sponsorships right. and that's how their song goes viral well you know what's interesting about the, the facebook ads and the instagram yeah is that it needs to be a page that already has followers so so if you have like let's say five thousand followers and you're running that page don't run it out to anyone run it to your own follower because your followers are probably not always seeing your content. Right. So you want right? them to get engaged. Right. Uh, Facebook has the terminology of uh, people who follow my page and people like them mm -hmm. or people who follow my 
page and their friends. When you pay, make the ad for that, it always goes back to the people who already follow you. And now they start circulating it back around to their friends as well. Right. But if you just put in, I wanted to go for men between 18 and 25, well, that may do nothing for you. Yeah. But if you actually like focus in on the people that already like your stuff, that's actually how I found it works. Because they know you. So it almost feels like it's more personal. You, but the irony is I have to pay for people who want to follow me, people who want to see my content, people who want to see my videos. And I have to pay for them to now see my video. Right. Because they weren't surfacing. Because like the algorithm does this thing where it's like you have like three, four or five people who are very active on your account, like yeah. on your stuff or you you tag them in some stuff. Those are the ones that pop up first. So it's like after like 100 people, like chances are I'm not seeing their stories. I'm not sitting there for three hours going through all the stories. Right. And it's like, well, how can I get my stories to be on everyone's front page? Right. And it's just like the algorithm chooses who it wants to put in front of really big creators that are popular. Like theirs will always be the first one on everyone's first up story. Right. And it's like, you you just got to get the algorithm to like favor you. Well, that's also because Instagram saying these are the people that are keeping people on oh, Instagram. Yeah. We were talking earlier about like the creator fund mm -hmm. really screwing us over. Oh, yeah. And like getting rid of all that. And the, yeah. the, the problem is, is that when I have people who refuse, when Instagram refuses, push my content. Yeah. And then takes away my monetization. All I'm doing now is just giving them free content. Yeah, pretty much. Right. We're just giving them free stuff. And Instagram is going to be able to go back and say, look, we had 2 billion videos posted today. Well, I didn't make any money off and I was making. So there, there is a kind of bait and switch that's happening. And I do feel like, and I'm sure you feel like this too, kind of like rats in a maze. Zuckerberg is looking at us going, well, what do we do if we put the cheese over there? And what do they do if we put the cheese over there? What do we do if we just block them? Right? right? Let's see how they respond. Right. I mean, I guess there's a part of me that wants to get off the grid and go live in a cabin in the woods yeah. and never worry about this again. Right. Right. right? Kidding, yeah. right? Just take me get married, have a bunch of kids. We can all just chop wood together. But instead, we're making content. It's a different generation we live in now. I will always use social media because it's the biggest and easiest way to reach amount of people. And I'm always trying to touch and reach people with stories or like motivation or like, I want to make a difference in my community and in the world. And at some point, I think the only way to really reach if I'm not traveling around and doing it digitally. And I think that that's the biggest reach we had. The easiest way to do the biggest reach with the resources. And the other thing though, too, and about reach, because I was a teacher for many years, so I do know this. Let's, let's say your wildest dreams don't come true. I hope they do. But if they didn't, you don't know who you influenced who will then become the next become big thing. the next big thing, yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize is the ripple effect, the butterfly effect. All of these things are happening all the time. There's a girl who is watching one of your uh, uh, Machine Gun Kelly videos mm -hmm. and going, I want to do that for, and you need the band. Mm -hmm. right and goo goo dolls doesn't matter mm -hmm. they're just like i want to do that and then they blow up but it's because you did your video yeah and so the residuals the ripple effect we may never know them but on some level you will yeah i think you will at some yeah. level you're gonna go that looks familiar and that's something that i have to remind myself i've inspired a lot of people to do comedy and become comedians and through the school and they were successful and they now they have a million followers on TikTok. Now they're doing this professionally for a living. I have a wonderful career. Very lucky. I have to agree and relate to exactly what you're saying because I was just getting into YouTube and Olivia Rodrigo dropped driver's license and yeah. I hadn't made a reaction to it yet, but the song really touched me and I was in an Uber with a friend and I had a few drinks. I showed her the song and I explained that I was doing the YouTube thing because it was like the pandemic time. And so I was like, yeah, like I'm making YouTube videos and I'm going to actually write as soon as... I got out of the car with her. Like the next day I made the reaction for it. And I, the emotions were still so um, fresh. I made a great video. That video went viral. The night before I was in the car with her talking about I'm gonna go make a reaction to this video because people love reaction videos. Yeah. I saw a girl do a reaction video and I was like, wow, that was really funny. She was so funny. She has comedic personality, made me laugh. I wanna do this. So I did it. And then I was in that Uber with this girl showing her that, I, you know, this is a few reaction videos that I've already done. Several weeks, months later, she started a YouTube channel. So then they moved in together and she went full time YouTube. Like she started doing gaming and he was helping her out because he had an idea already because I think he was doing content as well and was pretty successful. So they, they he kind of helped her out on doing some like character things with like outfits and she started doing movie reviews. She was doing the whole thing. This girl was so consistent and her channel took off way more than my channel. Like I haven't been as consistent. Clearly you know, yeah. life gets in the way, help her along the way and she had the time and she did it. And I love that because I was like, 
I, it refers me back to that Uber moment. Might have put that thought or that seed there. And I'm not saying that that was the reason she started, but she may have seen many people doing it, met this guy, he said, you should do it. And she did it. And I was like, hey, like, I love this for you. And I, I think it was wonderful to be able to to see that ripple of that, like you were referring. Yeah, but that's all of life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you know, you, you, you don't know who you're affecting at work. You don't know who you're affecting at church. You don't know who you're affecting anywhere. And, and then one day somebody comes up to you and says, Oh, this really, like, you don't realize that this really affected. The guy who wrote Moby Dick, Herman Melville, he died penniless. And he died so, so penniless that they couldn't even spell his full name on his tombstone. And he went on to become one of the most popular writers who inspired all the other writers. And Moby Dick, everyone's heard of that mm -hmm. book. So you don't know what your effect is going to be. Right. I mean, uh, Van Gogh, the oh, artist. Yeah. yeah. It's Van Gogh. There's a movie that they made about his life. And one of the best quotes he ever said was, is what if my art wasn't made for this generation, but for a future, which it was. Mm -hmm. He died penniless. He died uh, in a mental institution, like mm -hmm. surrounded by priests and nuns who were taking care of him. And now all of his work goes for $50 million. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there is the possibility yeah. that one day my drive will become this like, oh, the Paul Mumji was the comedian of his generation. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't, but who knows what will happen with that content yeah. down the road because it's there forever. Right. Like that's the other thing. I was going to say, especially with online. Oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's YouTube videos that were up 15, 16, 17, 18 years ago. I think that's right, kind of one of where it started. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, I mean, people go back and they got millions of views. They didn't have millions. And now it's a famous video. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's always a boss. I agree. You never know. Okay, we're going to play another game. All right. I sat next to her one time at a movie. Did you? I went and saw The Way, Way Back. It was a, a special screening for the director and the writers and all that. And I look over next to me. And so this was about 10 years ago. So, uh, 32 year old Paul yeah. is sitting next to Kirsten Dunst. And at the time, I'm. you want to know what I did? What? She's married now to yeah. Jesse Plemons, who looks kind of like me. So that really upset me. Okay. Like all of a sudden I'm like, wait, I had a shot. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm not famous, but he wasn't either at the time. I started Googling on my phone. Who is Kirsten Dunst dating to see if she was single? And it said she was single. And I thought to myself, all right, we're going to make our move, Paul. We're going to do it. And I looked over, I'll never forget. And I smiled and she smiled. And then I just, oh no, we're not going to ruin this. Like I was like, no, I, I was, oh, I'm such a coward. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't you just no. hate that? Oh. You know, that happened to me with Matt Wright. So I was in Long Beach with some friends from work and I don't, I don't ever go to Long Beach. And right. I also don't really like- For safety work. reasons. Yeah. Well, yeah, that. And also <laughs> I just don't like, I guess just a strip of like really like tiny college bars or whatever. Uh -huh. And I'm not really into that, but I went with my friends who are a lot, like most of them were a lot younger. And uh, we go into this one bar, half of the people leave because it's late. Yeah. Like I don't have my ID or whatever. So we go in and it's just like, I'm with the girl. So it's like, I see this guy and I'm like, I don't even know who he is. Right. I'm just like, okay, he's pretty good looking. Right. And so my friends who I was with, I was just like, you know, we were like scout in the room. One of the girls I was with was with like her man. And then the other girl, I don't even know what her relationship status is, but she's not interested. Right. So they're trying to like wing for me. And so they're like, they turn around, they tap on this guy's shoulder and he looks and, you know, he's like, I refrained because I don't really chase. And I was like, well, if he was interested, like he'll come over whenever I was trying to get him to notice me. But the girls were like, no, like we got to like tap on him. And I was like, I'm not trying to be too like aggressive. Hunters and gatherers. Yeah, right. Exactly. Because he's a girlfriend, like probably not interested. That's why he probably didn't make any more of a movie. I think he has a girlfriend. He did. Yeah. been talking about it. Yeah, he's yeah. a girlfriend. We're always in seventh grade, aren't we? Yeah, right. We're <laughs> always in seventh grade. I was like, why was I being so weird? Like, why did I yeah. have to be like that? Like, you were long like hey, how are you? Like, If you were in different. Orange County, it would have been a whole different thing. Right, I would have been like, hey, what's your name? Oh, man, yeah. right? Sometimes, like, in the moment, I, like, I refrain. It happened with Machine Gun Kelly. It always happens to me with my celebrity crushes. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. It's called Who Are They? Okay. I'm going to show you a couple different people, pictures. You have to guess who they are. Okay. There's no time limit. You know, if you, if you don't are know. These are these creators or these just are random? Just people that are comedians, um, YouTubers that you might know, and just really popular celebrities and influencers. Oh, God. That you should know. Your audience is going to think I'm a boomer you at the end of this. Know. Okay. You never know. All right. You never know. You Let's say. Chances are, you know. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to be positive. I think you're going to do pretty good. Okay. I think you're going to do pretty good. Okay. Here's the first one. Um, No idea. No idea. Jake Paul. Oh, it's Harry Potter. Yeah. Daniel Radcliffe. That is, I have no idea. Mr. Beast. Mr. Oh, that's Mr. Beast. Yeah. That's Jim Carrey. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm so old. You forget how old I am sometimes. That's one of the Logans, isn't it? That's a Logan Paul. Logan Paul, yeah. Yeah. The other one was Jake Paul. Right. Uh, is that Chalamet? Timothy Chalamet? No, oh, is that Michigan Kelly? That's he looks different in that. Yeah, I know. He looks a little bit, doesn't he look a little bit like... Yeah, not the same, yeah. Yeah, they just got to get that kid uh, stretch out his ankles and play him in a movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. That's Jenna Marbles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's it. I didn't do that bad. 
Look at me. High five. At least not one of the Paw brothers. Yes. <laughs> other pictures. Yeah. I mean, we have known each other for five years, and I have sent you silly pictures of Machine Gun yeah. Kelly. So I know what he looks like. Yeah. But I, I, I think of him more as blonde hair with yeah. pink. Right. I don't think of him as pink, pink hair. hair right. Yeah. Right. I know Shalom has done some weird hair stuff. Recently. Yeah. Yeah. He was in the Wonka movie. Okay, right, so he's right. the, the, and he's got the, the bone structure. Too. Right. So I thought for a second there, but then I was like, wait a minute, it has to be Machine Gun Kelly. Because yeah. It's your show. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> good. Good call. Good context clues. And then obviously, very very young picture of Jim Carrey, which that face is a face you cannot miss. Yeah. Oh, I love it all buttoned up. Looks like an '80s sitcom star. <laughs> Right. He looks like he could have been yeah. like playing a bosom buddies at Tom Hanks show back in the 80s. I mean, he looked classic, yeah. classic yeah. media there. You don't forget a face. No, no matter how old they are. This is the difference between you and me is yeah. that I would have like weird historical figures that nobody would get. Yeah. And I would just be it would be the most passive aggressive. Like I know history. And you don't. Yeah. Right. Whereas you are actually doing something that people at home can play as well. I would have John Quincy Adams and you'd be like. Who the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> right. I think the, the the goal of this game in general is just because when I pop them up on the screen yeah. and you're not sure who they are, the people in the audience are like, that's blah, blah, blah. How do you right. not know that? Because majority of people may know. I knew one of the low, I knew one of the Pauls. So that's, yeah. yeah. And that's usually how it is most people. They they favor one or the other because they're just familiar with that content more than the other one's content. Yeah. A lot of times they'll pair them together and be like the Paul brothers, one of the Paul brothers. Um, or they just get them mixed up, so they'll just call each other. Oh, things. I couldn't tell you. That. Like, I only guessed because I knew the other one, and then that triggered that one. Yeah. But but I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I, I bet if I saw them in real life, yeah. I'd be like, yeah. I feel like if you're not familiar with the content, you won't. But if you're somebody who's very familiar, then you yeah. know the difference between the two of them, like, right away. Well, which one's the fighter? Well, they're, they're both into fighting, but one does boxing and one does MMA. Right. The MMA guy, he's been killing. Yeah, Logan Paul? Yes, Logan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he's beating some names. Yeah, that's what yeah. I heard. Yeah, he had a he had a champion belt or something. He was yeah. showing off. I love when they like branch out and to do different things and oh. use their their um, audience to promote other brands or to engage in other activities that bring audience like intertwine audiences into different. They started on like social media and then they're bringing large social media people into the boxing. Well, they world. were Vine kids, weren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact, I have a friend who's in one. I think it might have been Logan Paul's video. He was in a Vine. His ex girlfriend shows me the Vine. This is how I figured out who these guys were originally. Yeah. She goes, my ex-boyfriend just found out he's, he's in a vine with Logan Paul. And I, I didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. And then she showed it to me. And he's just like, they thought he was a girl because he had long hair. Mm -hmm. And then he turned around. Oh, and he it's had like, beer. No. Yeah. Funny stuff in six seconds, right? Oh, yeah. Crazy. Have you played Fruit by the Foot Challenge? I have not. Okay. Well, you're playing the first time today. Okay. Basically. So I open it up now. Yeah, open it up. And then you're going to unravel it all the way. With no hands, on the count of three, whoever eats it all with no hands first win. <laughs> oh my gosh, how is this so good at this? How is this so good at this? I'm good. I'm good with some. You did that quicker than a lot of people. How does it taste? Cheers. Cheers. Do you normally win? No, and sometimes I get too excited where I'm laughing, where I'm talking, that I'm not paying attention, and usually my guest is like going right, going in at it, and I'm getting distracted. And I like to chew it as I put it in my mouth, so I always end up dropping it, kind of like you did. For me, I, to be perfectly honest, all I did was I just used my tongue to push yeah. it up. Right, that's that's the trick. Okay. Well, originally when you were when you, when you said, it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna embarrass myself in front of all these people. It's gonna be hideous. It's just like it's just gonna be dangling the entire time. Like it's just like. Paul, okay, we're done now. You know, you just like turn the light off. Yeah. <laughs> like it's over, Paul. So what do I win? What do I win? It's the long form version that I put on YouTube. So when I upload that video, that's the video that has to have 100 likes and 5,000. Okay. 100 likes on one of the platforms or the consolation prize. Right. Yeah. 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 Participation trophy. Pretty much. Do you have any advice for content creators or any comedians who want to get into the space or are in the space and need a, like some advice to get up and going? Or So two pieces of advice. One is more like practical and the other is more philosophical. The practical is this. Just keep putting stuff up. Uh -huh. It's discouraging. No one's going to watch you in the beginning. No one knows who you are in the beginning. It may take years, but if you do make it, what'll happen is you brought up Matt Rife. He ended up having a video that went viral. Then everyone went back and watched all the non-viral videos. Yeah. And then they all went viral. And now he has a Netflix. Show. Yeah. Okay. And all within two years. Yeah. Like he was going to quit. Yeah. His friend begged him to post something. Yeah. Okay. So just keep posting. The second thing is, and this is where I'm more philosophical, your success in 
what whatever you want to call this content industry hollywood whatever entertainment, yeah. entertainment does not define you and so therefore what you choose to do is your journey mm -hmm. and if you choose to post for fun and that's all you're going to do then that's okay mm -hmm. and if if you only get 500 followers that's okay it doesn't make you any more or less than anyone else and you have to remember that mm -hmm. because if you look at your life based on how many people are following you it doesn't work mm -hmm. okay the, the person who has the most followers is Jesus, okay? <laughs> yeah. And But when he was on earth, he had 12 and one betrayed him. You can't look at the world as followers versus non-followers, viral versus non-viral. It's goals. If you want to make it your career, make it your career. But I've seen too many people, especially comedians, where they get depressed because they don't have a viral clip. They're not getting the money they think they should get. And I keep telling them, that's that's not what we were put on earth for. We were put on earth to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And if some of our content does it, but like I said, you don't know who you're inspiring. Let's say 12 people watch the tech talk. It just takes one to have made someone. So if those 12 people loved it, think about how many people don't make 12 people happy. So we're sitting here mad that we got shadow banned. But in reality, what if 12 people just were really happy because they saw your take on Machine Gun Kelly or they mm -hmm. saw my clip joking about dating or something. And that, that needs to be the mindset. Mm -hmm. And when that's the mindset, no matter what happens, you're going to be satisfied. And until you're satisfied, you'll never be satisfied yeah. about your content. You truly have to be passionate about what you're creating first and foremost, because the numbers and the money will come after. But it's like right. you have to love what you do and create positive reasons like you want the ripple effect or to inspire somebody and forget that numbers are there because sometimes the numbers will get to our head. We just want more numbers. We're not even worried about the message behind it. We're almost forgetting the reason why we're doing it. And then we also lose the the passion for it because right. we're so are we getting numbers? And it shouldn't be about that. It's if it's five people who are reacting to those who put five people enjoy it and did one person did it make a difference in their day it takes one that's it yeah. just one one person can change the world it's true yeah that's true well thank you thank you for having me on yeah, thank you for it was so much fun i can't believe i knew all those famous people i told you you would i can't I... believe i beat you in a tongue competition with the you did good today i did really good you today. held it down i did yeah. and i drove you know two hours I to know. get there i'm very grateful that people take the time to come all the way down because they don't live in la and to be a part of this and it means yeah. a lot to me so it makes me even more happier and more excited to put the project out. So that's why when every day when I'm not doing anything else and people are inviting me here and there, why aren't you hanging out? Where you been? Why are you so recluse or whatever? I'm like, because I've been working on this project right. and I want to get it done and I'm very passionate about it. And I have a lot of people involved, a lot of people who are excited about it too. So it's like, now it's it's go time. It's like, get it done, get it out. There's a lot of editing, but I'm working on it. Because <laughs> it's like, I was having trouble making reaction videos that were five minutes long. It's like, now I'm doing two hour long podcast. <laughs> It's a lot. It's a lot. I, I feel myself in the deep end, but I feel like sometimes that's what it takes. So there's definitely a visual aspect to it. And I like to call it a pod show because it's not quite a podcast because you can, you know, I could put it on streaming services, which may be down the line, but I want it to be a show for you to the people watch. That's why I have the aesthetic, you know, so I'm like when people watch, I want them to feel like they're in the living room too. And they're having this conversation with, you know, and benefiting from the conversation. It's, but I really appreciate you taking the time to, to be here and, and to share your knowledge about comedy. And I know there's a lot of people in the space who are watching this who, speaking from someone with so much experience, hearing the advice, I think they could take it and it would be very beneficial to some people watching. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Go ahead and give this video a like and hit the subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. Paul is here, we're signing out, and it's a rock. Thank you guys for tuning in. Yay. Until us.